Sir. Lord Morgan to talk about the most heartbreaking storyline of my career next live on First Help. <laughs> adorable picture you've ever seen or what and this seems to be like a, a pure soap phenomenon i've had a lot of moms tell me that uh, when pure soap song comes on their kids rush to the tv screen this little tyke is 10 month old eric charles nemchok of elmhurst illinois and according to his mom becky he is a huge pure soap fan we start early uh thanks for the pictures and the nice note and eric's gonna go up on my wall well, you guys did it again. The response to the first day of our Pure Soap Emmy poll was absolutely incredible. And we now know who you picked as this year's outstanding lead actress. But we're not going to tell you now. We're going to be announcing all the winners on our special Emmy show next Wednesday. And later on today, you're going to have the chance to pick the winner in the outstanding supporting actor category. Now also, the response to our Vidal Sassoon-sponsored Pure Soap contest is amazingly huge, and we're going to have all the details on how you can enter in just a few moments. And later on in the show, I'm going to welcome Jacqueline Zeman, who plays Bobby Jones on General Hospital, and we're going to be talking about what might just be the best storyline of her long and distinguished career on GH. And on the news front, a couple of items. Congrats to recent Pure Soap guest, Barbara Crampton, who plays Melinda Lewis on Guiding Light. She is set to spend the month of June, get this, in Italy, filming the sci-fi flick Castle Freak. And besides her daytime duties, Barbara is a sometimes queen of the killer bee movies, like a 1985's cult classic, Reanimator. And if you're not going to be in New York for the Emmys, but you need your soap fix, how does this sound? A cruise on the Queen of New Orleans Riverboat Casino with none other than Terry Lester, the former Royce of As the World Turns. Now, the cruise begins at 11 a.m. on May 25th, that's a Wednesday, and you can get your further details by calling 1-800-587-LUCK. Okay, the big question today is Dorian Lord innocent or guilty in the murder of her husband, Victor Lord, some 18 years ago? The jury's still deliberating, and that leaves Dorian and her weary lawyer, Nora, to take a deep breath and wait for the decision. It's been a tough haul for both of them, and it's often appeared that they might just murder each other throughout this trial. But on yesterday's show, the two shared a kinder and gentler moment. I'm very, very lucky to be stuck with you. No more stunts. Hey, I can't think of any that I haven't tried so far. <laughs> well... Should I have a jailbreak? Oh, God, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't say it. Uh, but, Nora, mm. what? If I'm convicted. Let's just seriously. cross that bridge. No, no, if we no, no, come no, 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 but really. Let's just wait and see what the verdict is for us, okay? Okay. Okay. In uh, cases like this, is. um, is a long deliberation or a short one better for the defense? Uh, well, it depends. And then the jury's <clears throat> been asked for... They're in. The jury has a verdict. Well, I could watch these two actresses read the telephone book, and that's probably why Robin Strasser is a past Emmy winner and Hilary B. Smith is in the running this year. Okay, with the big verdict happening in the next few days, we talked with Dorian's friends and foes alike for their predictions on the fate of Dorian Lord. I think she's a killer. Oh, she is guilty of sin. I was there. I saw it. Sloan thinks she's guilty. Sloan well, probably wishes she was guilty, but I don't think she's guilty. To prove her completely innocent, I think, is beyond anyone's capability because nobody really knows what happened that night. She's never even told me what happened that night. And as Robin says, she's not guilty because she didn't play the part at the time. I'm a prosecutor. She's got to be guilty. I would like to think that the way I see this character, the way I play her, that if Victor needed killing, that I did it. If she is guilty of murder, I believe in capital punishment. I think she should cry. What do I think she deserves? Well, there are only two choices. Life imprisonment or death. I would certainly 
his life in prison so the story can go on. Probably a really good thinker. Dare I say caning? And I'm all for caning. Well, we're just going to have to watch and find out who's right. Anyway, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but coming up, Jacqueline Zeman, Bobby of GH, is going to be my guest today, and you get your chance to vote on the Emmys. And right now, a contest designed just for fans of daytime. Listen up. E! Entertainment Television invites you to enter the Vidal Sassoon Pure Soap Contest. We'll fly you and a guest to New York City, where you'll have a walk-on part on your choice of another world, as the world turns, or guiding light. And you'll not only be a soap star, you'll live like one. The winner will enjoy two nice hotel accommodations, a Canon Sure Shot camera, a year's supply of Vidal Sassoon, and a gift certificate from MCI so you can tell all your friends about your soap stardom. Four second prize winners will receive a Canon Sure Shot camera, and five third prize winners will receive a coupon from Domino's Pizza. To enter, hand print your name, address, and daytime telephone number on a postcard and send it to the Doll Sassoon Pure Soap Contest, care of E! Entertainment Television, P.O. Box 48972, Los Angeles, California, 90048. Hi, I'm Tom Christopher, and I played Dante Partu on Loving. ABC TV's Loving, and I wish every nominee for this year's 1994 Emmy Awards all the luck in the world. We're back, and Tom Christopher is in the running for this year's Outstanding Supporting Actor category, and if you've got the chance to cast a vote for the guy who played Dante on Loving or one of the other four nominees. Now, up till now, the only way possible is if you're on that blue ribbon panel that makes the daytime Emmy decisions. Well, ribbon schmibbon, we want to know who you want to win the Emmys this year. So that's why we came up with our special Pure Soap Emmy poll, and all you have to do is pick up the phone. If your pick in the Outstanding Supporting Actor category is Patrick Tovat, who plays Cal on As the World Turns, call 1-900-656 9191. Or you can vote for The Bold and the Beautiful Jane, played by Ian Buchanan, by dialing 1-900-656-9292. Also in the running is Justin Dees, who plays Buzz on Guiding Light. You can choose him by dialing 1-900-656-9393. Also nominated from Guiding Light is Jerry Verdorn, who plays Ross. Cast a vote for him by dialing 1-900-656-9494. And rounding out the category is Loving Dante. Vote for Tom Christopher by calling 1-900-656-9595. Remember, you must be 18 years or older, and each call costs 75 cents. Our lines are open for the next 24 hours, and we'll announce the results of our Pure Soap Emmy poll on May 25th, the day of the Emmy ceremony. And as I said at the top of the show, all of you responded wildly to our poll, and we thank you. Now keep it up and pick up that phone again. We're going to have the nominees and phone numbers for you one more time in a few moments. In the running in the Outstanding Younger Leading Actress category is the marvelous Melissa Hayden. She plays single mother Bridget on Guiding Light. She's quirky, kooky, unique, and very gifted. And here's a few of her best kept secrets. Hi, I'm Melissa Hayden. I play Bridget Reardon on Guiding Light. Making hamburgers in that orange julius that we worked in. I just didn't want to smell any grease. It was, I, it's just greasy. I want my donor. He kissed me and I hit him. <laughs> Penny to heaven. Film. Cab. My favorite date, he arrived at the door of the Dozen Roses. And then we went to dinner. And then we went down to the beach and like built a sandcastle. And then at the end of the evening, he kissed me on the cheek. Was that so sweet? But then I was wondering what was wrong with me. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> Are you serious? My butt. My tip tooth. This guy 
by Randy. Oh, man. Totally said, okay, I'm going, you know, for Christmas with my family, and I'll be back in a week. Nothing. Not a thing. Not a thing. A year later, he called me because his sister wanted an agent. What a dog. What a dog. Dancing, crochet, knitting, need a point. Oh, girl, he's back. Him. <laughs> commercial break right here but when we come back Jacqueline Zeman's going to join me we are going to be talking about the tragic and magnificent storyline of BJ and Maxi and if you'd like to talk with Jackie our pure soap hotlines are open now hi I'm Jerry Verdorn I play Ross Marler on Guiding Light which gathered 16 Emmy nominations this year and I would like to wish all the nominees best of luck. We are back. Without a doubt, the tale that has captured the staff here is the organ donor storyline on General Hospital. Once it was determined that Tony and Bobby's daughter, BJ, was brain dead, the agonizing decision to give her heart to the dying Maxie began. There is nothing more heart-wrenching than to watch a parent say goodbye to their child, but uh, that's the task at hand for Tony and Bobby Jones. I was so scared to be a mommy. I was afraid that I didn't deserve you. And then I would to her mom. But you made it easy. You taught me that there is no right or wrong. Only love. And if there's love, everything else can be forgiven. Well, I can't talk. <laughs> Can we go to commercial now? Um, I don't know how you prepared for this. I know you're a mommy. You've got two little girls at home, Cassidy and Lacey. How do you put yourself through something like this? It's real hard. Yeah. It's very difficult emotionally because even this, I found myself, first of all, for anybody who's ever had a kid, it's the most horrific thought, and uh. your brain shuts down at the thought, you know, because you don't even want to put it out into the universe. Right. Um, when these scripts that we that have just aired arrived at my house um, a week ago, my husband and I stood in our kitchen on our center island, flipping the scripts as I always do. Right. Tears streaming down our faces, just mm. reading it. So, I mean, I'm crying. We get little synopses of the shows, and uh, which are very short and succinct, and I'm still crying from them. And I'm, I'm just, uh, it's so emotional and so gut wrenching. You're doing. So such wonderful work. Well, thank you. You know, but I can't take all the... I mean, I can take this much credit, but the, the story, it's the material, it, it's Claire and all of our Claire writers. Claire Levine, the new writer. Claire, yes, who came up with this. And it's just... A, it's a conglomeration of true moments of... It's like I was talking on the phone yesterday to Karen Harris, who's one of our writers, and we were talking about... Um, she had called me because she had seen one of the scripts aired and she liked the way it came out. We were talking about how certain moments in your life are just so, such memorable or magnificent moments that makes them something that doesn't change and how you remember those moments for the rest of your life and how she's taken those, some of those moments in her life and put them in the mm -hmm. script 
And I know when they are, because I'll read a script and I'll, I'll, it'll become so real to me, just a line. And I found myself doing an interview the other day, repeating a line from a script that I had said as Bobby. And the line was, do you remember, it was a scene with Ruby, do you remember what you were doing 24 hours ago? Don't ever take for granted what you do, because you never know. That's exactly it. And isn't that a life in a nutshell? That's right? why I think people, when we talk about cliches, cliches are true. That's why they're yeah. there, because they ring so true to us. Were you asked ahead of time if you were up for this storyline? Uh, because this is, this is, as an actress, this is, you can't get better material than yeah, this. this is a, no, it just, it's a gift. 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 Well, uh, because this particular storyline has so many great emotional scenes, we're going to show another one. It features Brad Mall in what is probably the performance of his career as BJ's father, Tony. And it combines raw human emotion and scientific wonder. Be prepared. Brad has children of his own, too, so I'm sure he's drawing from his own. What did the two of you as actors uh, deal with or talk about preparing for all of this? You know, we didn't even talk about it. We couldn't. And it was the kind of, we even both said, we didn't even read ahead. After I read that first, the first three days of this week, I found myself that weekend not wanting to memorize the lines because I didn't want to, so we just took it day by day and scene by scene. Day by day. That's how we did it. Okay, well, I'm going to continue talking with Jackie Zeman after this quick break. She's going to be taking your calls. Now, if you haven't already cast your ballot for the outstanding supporting actor in our Pure Soap Emmy poll, remember the lines are open all day and all night. And I'm talking with Jackie Zeman about the storyline that has raised the Kleenex stock around here, let me tell you. And um, now, here's something I wanted to talk about. Just before this accident, or as this accident was about to happen, you're in the stairwell kissing Damien. Yes. And we have to talk about divine retribution here. You know, uh, Bobby fell off the good wagon, and this is what the fates have put out for you, that this is what your punishment is. How do you feel about that in the storyline? How do I feel? Yeah. You know, my, my critique? Yeah. Um, I think it's very true to life. You know, it's that old thing, God is going to get you. Mm -hmm. um, it's karma, it's whatever. I, I don't feel it's soap opera made up stuff at all. No, I think it's happened. so real. Yes. Yeah. And you know, in life, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Nobody's wonderful all the time. We all have we're our human. days. That's yeah, what we're human. human. We do things that are wrong. We make mistakes. The whole point is, you know, uh, at what price, you know? And um, people do make mistakes. Uh, the, the interesting thing to me is what happens now as a result right. of this. Right, right. You know. We have Jean. Jean, what do you think? Well, Sally, thanks for having, having the break after the two clips. Uh -huh. I, I have cried more in the last few days than I have in years. I'm telling you. Really. Well, I have a couple of questions. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jackie, uh, you know how they switch kids that are babies in soap, but I think the same young actress played that role, the role of BJ from baby to, you know what, I can't bring that up. <laughs> you have a good eye and you're absolutely right. And she, which is also very rare, is the one and only. She's not a twin. There's not two oh. or three of them. That's Bright in Hertford and she's had the part since she's six months old. Well, the other question was, I caught a glimpse of what I thought was BJ on a recent movie promo. What is she doing in the future? Well, as far as I know, she does plan to continue to work, um, and I'm sure she'll do very well. Her whole family's in the business. She has a sister and a brother, and they all work, and they're all on shows, so I'm sure she's going to move on and do, do wonderful things. 
and we're all very happy for him. But I have to admit, after seven years, we bonded pretty yeah, close. Yeah, that must have been and very I hard to say goodbye. Lot. Yeah, I really do miss her. I mm. mean, I cried real tears that sure. day, missing her as well as on the story, you know, yeah. as her mom. Yeah. Michelle, you're on for yourself. Okay, I have two questions. Um, the first one is, um, will Trif Tiffany try to regain custody of Lucas if Bobby and Tony's marriage break up? Ooh, there's you know, a thought. My husband in real life, Glenn, said the same thing to me. Yeah. He asked me the same. He said, do you think Tiffany will go back and try to get Lucas now because you're married? Sounds like that to him. Because uh, I hadn't even thought of it, you know? I, I don't know. I don't know. That's up to Claire and Wendy. <laughs> Before we go, because it's, it's, I want to show you've got, you showed us the pictures of your little girls. They're so cute. Can uh. we show that? Very cute. My real, this is my real girl. Yeah, Cassidy your real little girls. Look at that. That was our holiday card, so it's a couple months old. Now, which one's Cassidy? Cassidy's the three and a half year old with the white lace hat on. Uh, and Lacey, and Lacey 20, doesn't Lacey's have the white lace. Yeah, Lacey's 20, 22 months now. Thank you so much. But at least we land, yeah. landed on a happy little note there with the pictures of the kids. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having okay. me, Shelly. Uh, and uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be talking with your producer, Wendy Rich. She's going to be here, and you'll also get the chance to talk with her. Remember to give our Emmy poll line a call with your Emmy votes. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. Favorite on One Life to Live, and I would like to take this chance and wish Bob, Hillary, and Roger the best of luck on the 25th. I'll be there and I'll be rooting for you. We're back. In January of 1992, Wendy Rich was hired as the executive producer of General Hospital. After a successful career of programming, developing, and producing many of the early successes on the Fox network. Since Wendy headed over to Port Charles, the show has changed its look, its style, and its heart and soul. And when Wendy brought on the highly respected head writer, Claire Levine, the show grew into one of the best written in all of daytime. And the sweets period, Wendy and company reunited one of the show's most popular couples, Felicia and Frisco, in a poignant storyline about organ donors. Now that Maxie, the daughter of Felicia and Frisco, is recuperating from the heart transplant operation, it's time for them to evaluate the choices they made since they split up. Let's take a look. You made the right choice. Well, I... I guess I did. So did I. Doesn't mean that I haven't missed you. <laughs> Me too. Oh, finally you could see Maxie when she's well. She's the most wonderful little girl. Well, it's easy to tell why. She has a great mother, perfect role model. Hi. Um, Max thinks so, too. You know, he likes you a lot. Oh, yeah, he does. And he's crazy about Maxie. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. And you should know something, too. What? Mac and I make sure he knows that you're her father. Welcome, first wonderful. of all. But they are wonderful. Every single moment of these scripts lately is like you're hanging on every word. Your heart is just uh, driving me crazy. Now, you brought Frisco back for the sweets. Mm -hmm. I know he's not staying too long, but we're long. enjoying him. But are we're you thinking ahead? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> you're thinking ahead to November already. To no November we always sleep ahead. Uh, yeah. Think ahead. We sleep ahead and we think ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we're always thinking ahead. And? You have to think ahead. And? And you're not going to tell me a darn not thing, are a you? Thing. Shoot. No. I guess we're just going to have to tune in yes. tomorrow. Yes. But all, all the soaps think ahead. You have to be thinking. Yeah. Now, when you took over General Hospital, mm -hmm. what was your vision for it? What did you think needed fixing, or if anything? And what, did, what, did, what were the changes you first started making? Well, the, the goals were for character-driven stories, to really look at the characters within the town and uh, bring them up into the forefront of the storytelling 
and uh, to have the stories be driven by their characters. And of course, with Claire joining mm -hmm. us, uh, we're able to do that. And, and, and I think that really accomplished what my initial vision was, which was to have good character-driven stories, that, which is going on today with emotional foundation and emotional conflict, with mystery and adventure and romance, all with emotional conflict at its foundation. Mm -hmm. And I see that difference because when I, my days on GH was 10 years ago almost, mm -hmm. um, it seemed that the characters were, it was an enjoyable show back then, don't get me wrong, but it was yeah. more cartoony. It, it was like a, a, an adventure series. Yes. And this really gets you by the heart. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. How much of the success of this show and I know the answer to this, but I want to hear what you say. Is a collaborative effort between you and the writers and the directors and the actors? All of it. Okay, and how do you bring you it all together? Well, um, it's hard to describe, but I don't do it alone, and I'm only as good as the people that I work with. So I feel very blessed. The crew and the staff and the cast that I met when I walked there was a family. Mm -hmm. And they embraced me and allowed me to do what I do and work with them and find the right writer to write for them. They're all inspired by the writing now. They're all inspired by the oh, performing. We're all inspired by the camera work, by the lighting. Um, and, and even people who are working behind the scenes whose work may not appear to be so evident yeah. uh, to the public, everybody feels a part of this. So it's, we, we can't do it without a collaboration. And, and you can just tell that it is a happy group over there. We're really enjoying okay, it. Okay, we're going to take a break. Uh, here's another chance to get on today's Pure Soap Emmy poll, and we'll be back with Wendy Rich. That we love you. You are a fabulous producer. You are a wonderful lady. You are a nice friend. It's just such a pleasure to work with you and be around you and have you on the set. Mwah! We love you. Yeah. Hey, sweet. Yeah. Well, here we are again, and I'm talking with the executive producer of General Hospital, Wendy Rich, and I'm going to go right to the phones. We've got a okay. question from Jennifer. Good. Hi, first Hi. may I make a statement, I'd like to say that the whole BJ and Bobby, or BJ and Maxie storyline has just totally had me boohoo crying for a week. This is the best storyline, the emotional devastation that these people are going through is just, it's, it's fantastic. I just love the way you're doing the show. And second, with Sharon Wyatt being the only actress nominated from General mm -hmm. Hospital, do you believe that there's bias in the Emmys between the East and West Coast soaps? That's a good well, question. First of all, thank you for the compliments. Everybody at General Hospital appreciates that. They're working really hard and they're enjoying it as much as you are. Thank you. Um, I don't know about a bias. I don't think it's fair because I think our people deserve more awards. And um, I think it's a complicated question. I think that everybody in the industry is looking into it. And hopefully next year um, we'll have some more nominations from our show and from the other shows on the West Coast. Yeah. Now, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Did you yeah, want to? No. no. Um, the Luke and Laura storyline. Yes. You brought them back last sweeps in November with the Big Bang and Adventure storyline. Now, some people say they've changed. Well, obviously they have, but would you address that? Well, I think that 10 years have gone by. I don't think 10 years have gone by. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? And things change. Uh, we never intended to do uh, it the way it was done before because that uh, would not have brought them into the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, life changes in 10 years. I think that in, in Tony and Jeannie and and Claire and I always intended on bringing back the essence with a look into the future of who they've become because that is interesting probably to as many people as it isn't. I, I and agree. you just, you know, some people want what it was and other people want to take it forward and um, we're hoping to combine both. I especially loved the scenes with Luke where he was doubting himself and crying and asking, leaning on, on Laura and oh asking God. her for help and oh, I, yes. that just blew me away. And of course the scenes with the sonogram and his dealing with oh, having a girl. I know. And how am I going to deal with that? It and sounds like Ruby. a song from Carousel. <laughs> My <laughs> boy. So anyway, uh, we have Jerry on the line. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, I want to say I wish your show was an hour, 30 minutes. 30 minutes <laughs> just isn't enough to get uh, everything said. Well, Thank you. Nice. Um, and I love the Luke and Laura. I think they're great. They're supposed to be maturing. Mm -hmm. And I especially love the scenes with the dog. I want to know where you got the dog. Yeah. And the looks on the dog's yeah. face are great. Well, 
Laura Foster is um, Claire Levine's creation. Not really Claire Levine's creation, but Foster, Claire knew Foster. And when we first talked, she asked me how I felt about dogs and how I felt about animals on the show. And I love animals, and uh, though they do take a little bit more time, uh, she, we, I said, let's, let's see, what do you want to do? And why don't you bring them in? And so we brought them in, and I fell in love. And of course, now we have Annabelle. And now too. you have Annabelle. Yes. Now, and and Robin oh. has a dog, Friday. We mustn't forget oh, Friday. No. Friday before is there. we wrap, I, I can just tell a storyline. There's going to be babies from Annabelle and Foster. We'll see. Anyway, thank Let's you very much out. for <laughs> being here. Hey, okay, gang, thank I'm you. off to New York for next week's Emmys. And since I've never missed one of our 159 editions of Pure Soap, I wanted to make sure I left you in good hands. You're going to have Fred Rogan, who stepped in and blew us all away because he knows all about soap. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>